gospel, then we are back with more understanding from the Renewed Covenant. And this is from the uh, Aramaic English translation of the scriptures. Regarding then the being born again, there are so many interpretations of it from the Greco-Roman translation. And some people understand, some people don't, some people don't care. And uh, But what truly the Messiah pointed as per then the understanding from the Torah because there is a definite reason why he spoke the way he spoke. So then when he was teaching the people the Messiah was most of the time always rejected and um, the leaders did not like him because he was a person that came from heaven and his very presence exposed the evil and the people around him and that's why they hated him so much however there were people that they listened to him and then those words became then bothering them because those words were the truth though they did not want to admit they want to show that they had power they were in power they were in charge but then at the same time had this strange sense that the truth was given and they had to make a decision. And this person then, Nicodemus, was a rabbi. He was a teacher of the people. And he was very acquainted with the Torah and the prophets and the writings. But then when he was speaking these words, the Messiah, obviously, he then spoke those words to the, his own people, to the set apart or elect. Because there is no reference of Gentiles in it. It's 100% for the set apart. So then Nicodemus, he was then the ruler of the people and he was then convinced the Messiah had come because those signs and wonders he performed, a person could never do without the presence of Elohim. And then obviously Elohim was himself the Messiah. The situation is they did not understand when then there was a miracle involved or then a healing or then showing the seven functions of Ruach HaKodesh those were the very presence of the Creator Himself but then they try to justify themselves because they want a position in the Kingdom they want to be individuals with a specific position independent of their own and the Messiah names this area as being evil the Messiah did never, never, never change his mind in terms of giving independence and having people with their own niches of some sort of a relation with the functioning as being individuals with the specific rights that they can do themselves on their own apart from the Creator. That's why the Messiah was so hated. Because the Messiah did not show individuality. He was a person that came from heaven and when the miracles were performed, it was the very presence of Elohim and then the Messiah did not take the credit for it. And then the leaders, they were very mad because they were a people that they wanted pat in the backs. They want people to be recognized as having a position. A people with some sort of a link with the heaven to become themselves important. And this is non-existent in Hebraic understanding from the time of the Messiah until the end of this age. That's why they hated him. But then Nicodemus, he was then the ruler of the people. Nicodemus, they came and he came at night. Because during the day, obviously, he didn't want to expose himself because the Messiah was treated as then a secondary, low-level, low-caste person. Believe it or not, when you read these scriptures, you don't think you were reading from a king. He was very much rejected and he was the lowest of the list, even though he was showing signs and miracles. So there is a dual understanding with this because Nicodemus, he came at night 
showing then the Mashiach that he was then did in a position he did not to expose himself then being observed during the day speaking with the Mashiach because they did not recognize him as the Mashiach though his signs and wonders and the works of Ruach Kodesh was very evident so then he comes at night a ruler then of the people and then these men came to Yeshua at night and said to him Rabbi we know that you were sent from Elohim for then a male teacher is not able to do these miracles that you do except he who Elohim is with then Yeshua answered and said to him certainly if a male is not born from the start he is not able to enter the kingdom of Elohim Nicodemus then he was very uh, surprised and said to him how is it doable for a man to enter the womb of his mother in the second time be born and then Yeshua answered and said to him if a man is not born from the water and of the spirit he is not then able to enter the kingdom of Elohim what is born of the flesh is flesh what is born of the spirit is a spirit do not marvel that myself had said this to you because it is required for you to be born from the start the wind blow where it wishes and you hear it but you do not know from where it comes or where it goes likewise is everyone who is born of the spirit Nicodemus then answered and said to him how is it doable then because he was very uh, inquisitive regarding this area and then Yeshua answered and said to him are you then a teacher of the people and you don't know this so what is he explaining then this is a very high conversation when comparing with the lifestyle of the set apart versus then Gentiles. Gentiles are not even mentioned in this area of the scripture. Gentiles are not even part of it. He was speaking with his own people regarding the Torah and the prophets and what then the anointing would bring enlightenment to their understanding as Torah grace or grace imputed in the Torah. So then some people say, oh, what it means born again? Born again is the relink of the Spirit, but then a person is guided by the Spirit. And obviously the society where a person is born, when a person is from the Mishia, a person is highly persecuted. As the Mishia had stated. Because the Mishia knew that in the future would have a false anointing in his name, such as first day observance produces false anointings he knew that people would be highly persecuted but then he explained what it meant must be born again from the start before Adam then got involved himself with sin that came from his wife So then he explains, and then later he said, must be born of water and of the Spirit. Simply he was saying, you must also understand that the prophets that came after, pointing to this relink, and then Yohanan ben Zechariah was then the mikvah, and then you have to be born again of the water and the Spirit, you have to be baptized or then mikvahed, and then the relink must be done in your life or you can't enter the kingdom there is no link with his own holy dam being mixed with water and blah 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 no it's a simple understanding of the Yohanan ben Zechariah he was the mikvah he mikvah the people and then afterwards they were relinked it's very simple but then Nicodemus he did not understand what he was speaking of. Of course it was unheard of during that time. But because then the rulers of the people they wanted to be in charge at any cost. 
then Yeshua had no other recourse other than saying you don't know this you want to be a leader you want to be in charge you want to be mesmerizing the people and you don't know this because if you are a leader you should have this in mind so then what a lot of people they uh, involved themselves in these days regarding this born again experience they never understand the soul and the spirit they try to govern themselves with their soul based upon a twisted scripture that never works that's why the church is a failure and then he was then taught But not very many people these days, they have the understanding of the scriptures because they want to be individuals with a special position. They want to relate with the Messiah as their friend, but individuals. As the Messiah did, so they would do. They would have some sort of individuality particular of themselves and does not exist either a person is one with the Creator or is not part of Him there is no individuality when it comes to the anointing and then more so because he's speaking of his own people these are precisely teachings from those in the future would be in the camps the Gentiles are not even part of it. The Gentiles would be then born again, and they would be mikvahed, but then they would have the responsibility only of a 0.5%. They are not even part of this conversation. That's why the advancement of the Gentiles and try to have some sort of a ministry is always evil. Because they were never meant of having ministries or having some sort of a function of their own. However, they set apart rather than functioning in the spirit, they are also trying to find their own individuality. And it never works. That's why then the Shaul, the Shaliak said that in the end, discipline would come upon the house of Elohim. He meant his camps. That's why then when you shift then to the Revelation, the 20th chapter, the 9th verse, you find it in camps. Because as the time is then expiring, then the deceit is ending, and then Revelation is coming. And don't expect these sharings coming from a perfect person. The perfect person is found only in the tabernacles of the camps. If you then try to force a brother or a person to give you the answers because you are lazy not to find on your own, and you judge your brother because you expected that brother to be perfect on your own eyes, then you best evaluate your own lifestyle. Because the measuring person is the Messiah, not the brother. Because if you judge your brother, if you are watching your brother very closely and trying to find fault, make sure your life is on a line. And lined up with the Messiah's life. But then the individuality part of the person always trying to find fault, it's amazing. Precisely what the people of the law in the past tried to do with the Messiah. The Messiah came and he was teaching. And then they tried to find fault in his life. That's why he was low-casted. There is a reason why Nicodemus came at night. Because the people, they were ashamed of the Messiah. Because they want their individuality. The ability of always trying to find some sort of a fault to make themselves grander. And then when they find some sort of a trouble, oh boy, then they make such a 
huge feast out of it. Precisely what the uh, people of the law in the past tried to do. The most contented time of the people of the law was then when the Messiah was sentenced to die on a stake. It was a feast everywhere because they were evil. But when they sentenced the Messiah to die on a stake, then they were realized because then they felt they had an individuality met. If you are a person that is always trying to find a fault in somebody's life, you are lost yourself because there is not a person in this earth that can be absolutely perfect. That's why the Messiah, so perfect as he is, he is only found in the tabernacles of the camps. He won't find himself any place else outside of the tabernacle. Then because people they want to be individuals, they want their tiny niche or their individuality. Then they concoct a savior that is wandering away from the tabernacle. Precisely what Satan wants to make this earth of condemned at their own kingdom, their own individuality. But always trying to find fault. It's never a hundred percent, but it's obviously never a hundred percent because we should never be placing our hopes in people. Our measuring person is the Messiah and he's found in each tabernacle of each camp. And then more so when the people don't understand that the Torah was not abolished. Then those people are absolutely stupid beyond imagination. Stay tuned, much more coming up.